All right, this is one of the flies that we've been tying for years and years. Um, another business trip that I was on, I was actually in Arizona, and I stopped by Arizona Fly Fishers and asked what their local pattern was. And I met John Romer. Um, and John Romer is, is the guy that invented Arizona Semi Seal. Uh, any packaging that you see that's labeled Arizona Semi Seal is coming from him. So the cool stuff about the cool thing about this dubbing is that you know there's so many different colors, um, all of them catch fish, super easy to tie. And I remember one of his shop staff. They sat me down. They said, "Listen, this is one of the easiest flies to tie." They got me some dubbing, showed me how to tie it, and the rest is history. You've seen that we've used this stuff in you know the Sculpito, the Cheech Leech, but this fly that we're going to tie right now. It's kind of the one of the starting patterns that started the craze of the, the Arizona Semi Seal. Anyway, we just got a whole bunch of this Semi Seal in our store, a lot of different colors. And so in this video, I'm going to show you two different ways to tie a Semi Seal leech. Both of them very, very simple. Uh, one of them is John Romer's way, kind of how he envisioned it. And then uh, show you the way that, that I've been tying it lately. So. I've got a size 8 Allen S402 hook in the vise and just any thread will work. I've got this uh, Montana Fly 3 Ot, um, which works really good for these these bugs. Okay, so first of all, here's your package. All right. And if you open it up, pull the dubbing out of the top, you know, it it'll work, but what I like to do is I like to take the bag and come back here to this corner and just snip the corner off of the off of the bag. And then if you push the dubbing you can see that it starts coming out of the bag and I can pull it out. The reason for this is when you pull it out this way the, the fibers are kind of going to kind of line up a little bit better and you'll see as we do the tail on this fly it's it's critical to have the the the, the fibers lined up the same direction. Alright so I'm going to pull some fibers out, not too many so I've got a clump here and I'm just going to take it and preen it with my fingers until I get those fibers to line up. And kind of roll it in your fingers until we get something that looks like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and you can tie it right in the midpoint or you can tie it a little bit further back depending on how long you want the tail. So I'm going to tie it in right about here. and then you take these fibers and you just fold them back and you turn those into part of the tail as well. So that's that's the tail. Um, now the body of the fly, the rest of the fly is all semi seal. So one thing to make these super durable is to lay down a pretty good thread base here and now just tag it with a light layer of, of uh, super glue. All right. Now, one thing that will help you handle this dubbing a little bit better is uh, using some some of this hairline touch dub wax. And we're not going to put it on the thread at all. What I like to do is I just like to take the wax and just kind of dab my fingers in it, and that kind of gives you a better grip on this dubbing. Um, and I, I use this when I dub with with these uh, Arizona fibers the semi seal, the mega semi seal and also the synthetics and it gives you a better grip of the dubbing. A couple key factors here is I'm going to take a clump of dubbing and you're going to start dubbing this on your thread and the key is you don't want to bind it up too tight. The other thing is I'm a right handed tire and I tie you know the traditional way where I'm wrapping it uh, what is it clockwise around the hook if you're looking at it from the, the eye of the hook when you wrap this dubbing, when you spin this dubbing on, it needs to be counterclockwise. If you do it clockwise, which is how I typically dub uh, dubbing onto a, like a nymph, then you know the dubbing won't twist up the way you need it to. So it, wrap the dubbing on counterclockwise and just kind of loose. And you just kind of make a, a loose noodle here. All right, 
So I've got this dubbing on here. Now I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to grab this dubbing noodle and I'm going to push it all the way up to where the thread meets the body of the fly, like this. So if you use the rotary function here, um, you're not going to get the twist that you, you need. So you need to just use your thread. So I'll kind of show you here. So I've got my, my bobbin all the way up. Let's see, right there. All the way up to where the dubbing noodle ends because instead of just grabbing my bobbin where I would normally grab it, I'm going to grab actually the thread and hold the very tip of my bobbin. What that does is it doesn't allow the the, the dubbing loop to twist or untwist. So I'm going to grab that thread and I'm just going to start wrapping this forward. And as soon as those first fibers start to catch, then this dubbing noodle that I have will start to twist up naturally. So as you can see, it's starting to bind on pretty tight. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just kind of go back over some parts of the of the semi seal and it, man this is this is really bound on there tight. And if you want to add more if you didn't get quite enough, that works as well. So here we've got a very slim line leech. The best part about this technique, unlike the dubbing loop that we're going to do next, is you can just take the, the, the remaining dubbing that you didn't use, just pull it off your thread and you're done. So now I'm just going to clear a spot and whip finish the head. And really, that's all there is to it as far as the tying part. Then you grab your Velcro and you come in here and you really rough it up. You pull out a lot of those fibers to to give the fly some movement. So as you can see, I mean that that's a really slim line leech. It's super simple, but you can see the added flash in this fly just because of the way the dubbing is made. And uh, I mean you can add a bead to this fly, you can put lead underneath the body, but this fly as it is really really fishes well. In fact uh, we were fishing with with uh, a beginner a few weeks ago, my little brother, and uh, he fished these semi seal leeches in probably like eight different colors and he actually outfished me which he told me about repeatedly but all you know all because of this semi seal leech that we tied. So this is the first way to tie it really slim line. We're going to show you a little bit of different variation here too. Okay, this next version of the semi seal leech, I've got a big bead on. This is a 4.8 millimeter Allen fly fishing brass bead. Um, I don't necessarily fish tungsten all the time on these uh, leeches, just because I think the brass gives a little bit more natural movement. I've got a little bit of uh, lead free wire uh, just to kind of seat the bead up to the eye of the hook. I'm ready to tie in the tail. So I've got my fibers kind of preened the way I want them to. And it's so I'm going to tie it in, and if you want more of a slimline body without this bump in the back from pulling it over, um, a lot of times I'll just go ahead and, and wrap this all the way forward. And uh, that, that makes kind of a nice more slimline body to work with. And then with these fibers you can either trim them off or then you can pull those back. So there we've got a nice base to, to work with. So now we've essentially got the same tail. Um, so this version we're going to do a, a, a dubbing loop, which I think all of you guys know how to do, but a couple keys when you're doing it with this semi seal. Again, I'm going to lay down a little base of super glue so that it locks it in place. And, uh, make a loop and this is this is key when you've got your your bag cut at the corner or if you've got your dubbing in a dispenser when you're making a dubbing loop if you can keep those fibers uh, facing the same direction uh, it really makes for a really clean loop and again 
you use the dubbing wax it will help you grip the, the fibers a little bit better. So as you can see I'm just kind of building up a pretty sparse loop and you can see right through it. And again you want you want a slim body here. So there we've built our dubbing loop with the turbo dubbing spinner. We can just get that all twisted up really fast. And now you can use a rotary feature. And this this creates a little bit thicker body than the other method. So these are probably two methods that you, you should learn when you're messing with this, this semi seal. The reason why we use hot beads um, early in the spring, you know, this this orange bead really works well because uh, a lot of the rainbows and cutthroat are spawning where we are. But also, like a lime green bead is is really effective. In fact, Curtis fished one of these flies on probably one of our most productive days fishing, and fished it all the way till there was just a tiny bit of dubbing and a bead hanging on. The fish were still eating it. So uh, that one's affectionately named the Maddie's Special. There's a story behind that one. So I'm just going to whip finish, trim that off, and brush it out. So you can see that's a little bit more full profile. Now that's typically how I tie my semi seal leeches when I fish them, but uh, super effective fat pattern. Again, we've got I don't know how many colors on our site, but uh, check it out, tie some, and catch some fish.